Hello, good evening and welcome. It is Thursday the 23rd of January, the day that ITV, the Tonight programme on ITV, did half an hour on ASIGs and tonight we've got the investigative reporter with us that put the whole of that show together with Julie Etchingham. I wasn't expecting to see her. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the show. Uh, the guy's name is Chris Choi and as usual when he's with us I get very, very nervous. But good evening Chris. It's not brilliant. It could be a lot better, yes. I'm really sorry. That's probably a fault at this end, I would have thought. Well, we'll soon find out whether people can hear you, but I, I can hear you in the studio, um, and I think most people will be able to. Um, let's get straight into it. A, a quick question. How long had you Dave, been... Dave, I need to interrupt you. Nobody can hear Chris at all. OK, Chris, can you count to ten for me again, please? Nice and slow. One, two, three, four... That's better. That's better. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Okay, Chris. Um, if I can, if I can just go straight with it. Um, how long had you been researching the piece that went out tonight, the half-hour show? Well, I, I was last with you the first day that I was on the project. But the way it works is that, as a reporter, I'm not on it full time. I'll be doing, as people might have seen me doing on the day news stories as well on other subjects in that time so a couple of months couple of months on and off yeah okay um there were one or two things that 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 kind of stood out that people have already mentioned first one being did anybody point out that the diagram of the e-cig at the top of the show was wrong well i it sounds odd but i don't get to see the graphics because they go on at the last minute but uh the basic component message got across, didn't it? Yes, I think so. I think so. Um, and I've got to say, before we uh, before we hurtle too far into uh, into the show, I actually thought it was quite nicely balanced. Um, but there are one or two issues that that, that people have brought up. Um, Sav, anything? Well, let's go straight in from chat and see what they've got to say. Oh, the during the show, I was watching chat and. The main thing I have to say that was brought up in chat was the use of the word oil for the, the liquid that we vape. That was the main thing that people are really, really not happy about is that word oil. Yeah. Um, so I think this probably is down to the, uh, the lipoid pneumonia case that you looked at. Um, and... I don't know how much you knew about that one, but we covered the story when it was up here and made an awful lot of um, inquiries about it. And there's been now evidence come out of the States to say that there is no way that a liquid can actually cause lipoid pneumonia. However, if you use a mineral oil-based flavouring and mix your own, that might be the cause. I didn't know whether you'd been aware of that. No, that's very interesting. I mean, I think that talking to Glynis was quite important for us because the way I felt about it was that a lot of people were talking about the theory of wanting more research for various reasons. Mm -hmm. But for the audience, particularly at 7.30, which is a very general audience, they're not particularly scientific, they're not, you know, it's, it's very, very mainstream. We needed to put a human face on that quest for more knowledge. Yes. And, and, and it was with very great care that we put Glynis's story on, and, and only with an awful lot of qualifiers about the lack of evidence and proof, and quoting directly from the chest physician at the uh, Gateshead Hospital. Uh, I'm pointing out, incidentally, that we couldn't find any other similar cases. But as the human face of that quest for more knowledge, for, for more conclusive research, I thought that she had a, a solid place in what we were trying to achieve. Right. Uh, th th there have been one or two comments made to me that, uh, and I think it's quite right as well, that it might have been worth pointing out that even if that one death had been down to ASIGs, that in the course of time that you and I have been talking just now, which is just coming up to 10 minutes, 
60 people would have died if we're to believe what the World Health Organization tells us as a result of smoking. I think the, uh, the odds are very, very much in ASIG favour. And I, w I would like to ask you one question, and this, this is personally from me, and it's very simple. For you, having learned what you've learned over the last two months, and it's a very simple answer, e-cigs, good or bad? On balance. On if balance. Good that the consumer has a choice, and even knowing that there are some reservations from certain medical groups like the British Medical Association, like the World Health Organization, even knowing that the consumer at least has a choice. What's bad is that the regulators, the people that are actually paid to research these things, haven't caught up with this development and therefore for consumers at the moment, I don't feel it is often a, a well enough informed choice because there isn't really the information there that should be there after seven years of this product being part of our lifestyle. So good that we are moving forward with it. We must have the, not just the technology, we must have the debate about where we're going with it. If it's as good as many vapors claim, and they were well reflected in that documentary, they were. If they are as good, if they are as good as vapors claim, then I feel it is absolutely wrong that advertisers should not be able to shout from the rooftops that these things can help you quit tobacco, that these things are healthier than conventional cigarettes. What a crying shame if we've got the technology but we haven't had the debate as a society and we don't have the research and regulation to make the best of it. Okay, that, that seems like a fairly comprehensive answer. Um, I'll throw it across to Sav with chat because I know chat, no? No, not at the minute. Um, I'm getting a lot of sort of stuff that I'm trying to collate in chat at the minute. So you're covering everything as it's coming out. So if you just keep... Keep, keep, keep on the way we're going on. Yeah, John, I know you had one or two reservations. Yeah, I did. I mean, I could, I could see there was, uh, there's a limit to what you can do in half an hour. Um, you know, I kind of went through the program with a pen and paper and tried to sort of make notes of positives and negatives as, as they came up to me. Um, and certainly the first one was it was a great slot to have. Um, slap bang in the middle of em Emmerdale. Um, we're going to get a lot of old people. We certainly certainly can't be accused of, uh, of marketing to children here, can we? No. Um, but but certainly a, a number of things w worried me, and 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 generally I would say that I came up with far more negatives than positives. Uh, it may just be my sort of cynical nature. Um, I thought the the death case was, you know, you did mention twice that uh, that nothing had been proved, but it was kind of very much a mention in passing. Uh, and that kind of worried me a bit. Um, the advertising stuff was, well, ITV doesn't like advertising. I'm not so sure I understood that even. Um, and the woman who said that her children had heard a radio advert for e I must admit, I did laugh at that point. Um, but generally speaking, there was clearly an attempt at balance. It was lovely to finish on Robert West. Um, obviously, one of the two Robert West brothers that, that you showed uh, <laughs> show tonight <laughs> those famous people um, I mean I feel the same way as, as some of the people in chat have mentioned that that it was a shame that you didn't get to speak to any of the any of the other pro scientists you had a number of negative uh, speakers there the WHO the BMA and so on you really only had Robert West um, it, it, if only sort of Constantinos Farsalinos wasn't such a shy reclusive character <laughs> um, you might have got him on the show that would have been good but 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 generally you know it was it was interesting um, for the sort of audience that it was going to get, it will certainly provoke some thought. Um, I guess we'll start to see the reactions to that when we're out in the streets vaping, you know. Indeed, indeed. What, what do you say to that, Chris? Well, David, I didn't want to interrupt the flow, but I can't actually hear the other contributors. I can only hear your chair creaking and your voice 
which is quite a melodious combination. Can you just repeat the essence of what was said? The, the, the essence was basically about uh, advertising. I do apologise. I managed to get things horribly wrong tonight in terms of technology. I'm so used to using Skype and, and using FaceTime to bring this in does make life a little more difficult. I'm trying to fix things as we go um, and it's, it's not playing very nicely, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. I know you've... Can you hear me? Yes, 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 I can, I can. I do apologise, I was trying to fix things, so that put you on pause for a, uh, a little while. Yeah, it, it was, it was um, bits about... Um, John, if you talk in my ear, I'll be able to, to, to pass it through. Um, we're talking about it was good to finish with Robert West. Just a shame that perhaps he couldn't have spoken to more of the, uh, we'll call them pro-scientists, the likes of Konstantinos Varsalinos. Um, I have spoken personally with him. But he wasn't on the show. Um, and by the same token, it, it looked as though there were two or three uh, from the World Health Organization and the BMA that were kind of railed against us, and they are. Um, and it, it might have been perhaps you know nice to have brought in Konstantinos or um, Jacques Leuzek or, or any of the guys that spoke down at the uh, the ASIC summit. But it, it does. We had Professor West. We had Professor West who did speak at the ASIC summit. Indeed, yes. And he spoke very well. He spoke very, very well on our program. He spoke very well at the ESIG Summit. Uh, the kind of slot that we're talking about with the Tonight program, I have found time and time again, when the point is made by somebody who's from the mainstream of society, the point is made much better for that very general audience. Personally, I think it was better to hear from Lee, who runs the electric cigarette shop in Newcastle, in, in that he gave a very good account of himself. And, and in a program that is not meant to be a science program, I'd rather go out and find people like him mm -hmm. to give that side of the argument. Yes, yes. Um, that, that, that does make sense. It, it kind of begs the question as well. Do you see this as a starting point for a wider debate on ITV, perhaps live shows where um, people on both sides of the argument get together and, and I was going to say fight it out, but you know what I mean, a, a, a live show hosted by someone like yourself that can do the devil's advocate thing in the middle, would that be a possibility, do you think? Well, I can't talk for any of your programs, sadly, and unless they gave me a discussion program, which, uh, you know, if you wanted to start the petition, David, that would be fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, it's not going to happen, I don't think. But as far as I'm concerned, it is on the agenda, and, and I will continue to report it, and I will do my very best to persuade editors that this is something that must be discussed. I think it's a crucial public health debate. I think it's vital that we get to the real heart of the issue and work out what's gone wrong, which we can only do through scrutiny because something has gone wrong, even in the way that you there were expressing it as the they're against us. It's, a, it's, it's turned out into an, an us and them and we really need to get back on the same side that everybody, I'm sure, wherever they are in this debate, wants to do the most good, save the most lives, give the consumers the best possible options and there's something that's happened where this discussion is not happening in the mainstream media. Now it has tonight, and I see that very much as a start. Obviously there are some big debating points coming ahead, not least I think February the 26th when we finally get the rubber stamp on the EU directive and have a, a really close look at that. That will be a day that I would want to be reaching out to the vaping community and critics to, to again have this debate and move it on. The, the, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of vapors would say that uh, as far as the EU is concerned, they, A, they've never had a debate, B, they definitely haven't listened to vapors, and C, they don't care anyway. As you said, rubber stamp would appear to be the word, and I know the vaping community is completely up in arms about this. Um, I think this is, to go back to your original question, I think this is the start of a long conversation that we've all got to have together. And the EU is the next chapter, if you like, 
in, in opportunities to have this public debate. And every time there's a move on this story, then journalistically it gives an opportunity to persuade editors of programmes this is the time to look at these very important issues. So personally, I'll be using the, the tools that I have at my disposal, which are topical events, things that move this forward, where I can try and create more interest in, in getting airtime, because it's, it's not being given an awful lot in, in terms of airtime. It's not being given an awful lot of, of newsprint, and I don't think that there's a, often enough a, been an opportunity for people who are directly involved from the vaping community and from outside uh, to, to have the discussion. So, yeah, I mean, instinctively, I feel exactly the same as you. We, we should be having a live debate, and it should be rowdy, and we should be getting down to it. And if I could deliver it, I certainly would. And uh, wherever I can suggest it, I will. But all I can deliver is to edge things forward in the formats that I work, which is Daily News and the Tonight Documentary Strand. Right. Just just on a question on that, since we were talking about the EU and, and what vapors see as a failure to engage by the Commission and Council and, and, and everybody else, I know you did approach certain personalities in Brussels. Did they agree to appear and their footage not get used, or did you get brushed off? Well, no, no, we didn't get brushed off. I mean, part, part of the process of, of being one of the most reviled people in Britain, as I am, is that you um, spend a lot of time interviewing people and then they don't make the final cut. And, and in a similar way, I would say that at 7.30 on a Thursday night, scientists can seem alien to the audience that we're trying to reach. MEPs can seem equally out of touch with the real world and therefore, in our choice of people that were in, included in the documentary, um, we, we, we used other sources, but we did talk to MEPs and did do on-camera interviews, but they sadly did not make it into the final cut. We did manage to use them, incidentally, within the ITV framework, because also I have access to, to push material to our regional newsroom. So I had conversations with Yorkshire Television, for example, today, because their MEP is, has been very prominent. Uh, in, in pushing this whole thing through the European Parliament. So they ran that interview, although we did not, on the network documentary. Right. So that, that all of the footage that you've gathered then could be pushed around all of the uh, the ITV franchises and, and yeah. used? Yeah, depending on the editors in those newsrooms making the choice that talking about e-cigarettes is worthy of the airtime. Yeah, well, we did have some coverage up here in uh, in Tyne Tees, uh, which did it majored on Lee in Newcastle, um, for good or ill, um, and and yeah, I mean, I, I kind of appreciate that. Um, Sav, yeah, um, the main things again we've got coming from chat is the science and why people like Clive Bates and obviously we've said Dr. Farsalinos weren't used, uh -huh. um, but we've also got a question. Um, is it worth asking, Chris, who or where we need to ask the questions to get this coverage and well, get the programmes out? Did you get that, Chris? It's who or where do we need to ask in order to get that coverage and get these programmes out? Where, what, what would we as, as vapors need to do in order to, if you like, assist you in getting the debate more on television? Who do we need to hustle? Who do we need to talk to? I think that the, the news and factual TV agenda is driven by news events. And so I think it's a question of anticipating what, what is the next step on the story, being ahead of the game, persuading editors of TV stations, radio stations, newspapers, look, this is coming up in a couple of weeks' time. It's really important. We would like to contribute. That's all we can do, really, isn't it? But I think that... Putting it slap bang in the middle of ITV, I hope, will signal to people like Sky and the BBC that we're in, interested in this story now. If they want to compete with us, I hope they will. If they want to compete with us and do their own versions of this debate, great. If not, then we'll regard this as a story that's our own and we'll continue with what I see as a continuing conversation whereby we're trying to drive forward the issues and get to the heart of them and, and move things forward. Right. Okay. Sav, anything more from chat? I've, I've got to take them one at a time. Because I do, 
I absolutely do apologise, but the technology's let us down tonight in that it, it was working earlier and now it isn't. It's the nature of these things. The main things that we're getting from chat is obviously they've mentioned the vendor that was covered in the show that they're not particularly happy as he's not representative of what we would class as a good vendor. But the other main thing is getting debate. We found that we people won't engage with us, they won't talk to us and they won't listen and we just get dictated to. Okay. Um so Chris that that was basically that was a lot of people are saying that they weren't ha happy that you picked on that particular vendor because they don't consider that he's representative of what you would call a good vendor. Um, this is what's come from chat. Um, purely and simply because of this, this, I think, the quick notion, if I'm right, Sav? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and, and again, it's more about furthering the debate and getting it out to a wider audience. So, I mean, what, what made you pick on, on Newcastle as the, uh, the vendor? Is that just because you were there? Yeah, I think we came to see you and then we, you know, given that we have to make the best of our time and resources, then we looked for a, uh, an e-cigarette shop that was in the vicinity of when we were coming to see you the first time. Mm -hmm. But also I think it's legitimate just to choose one almost at random because that's what consumers do. That will be the consumer experience. They'll go to their high street shop and they'll be good and they'll be bad. Um, and I, I've been to quite a few whilst I've been researching this program, certainly the ones around London, um, popped into a few, spoke to the, the, the assistants there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that Lee was extraordinarily good or extraordinarily bad. What, what I did feel is that he was a very robust individual who got his point across very, very strongly. Um, he, he was no shrinking violet. That's and for I, sure, yeah. It, it could have been worse. Uh, if we'd have had somebody who had all the arguments but just didn't have that personal bizarre that he had of getting his point across. Yes, yes. Um, one, one of the other things that, that's already been passed on to me uh, to ask, and I, I, I am, I have to be mindful of the fact that it's the technology's gone to, to pot. Um, when you were talking to the, the, uh, the guy from the WHO that was wrongly labelled as Robert West, even though every sane person knows it wasn't and we we get that's not your fault i understand that um he did mention the toxins that are in e-cigs but you didn't go back and tell him that they're at the same levels as they are in nrt were you aware of that when you were interviewing him not particularly that not particularly that fact but we had a lot of conversations with the mhra and as you know they too talk about their worries about toxins, so it chimed in with that. Obviously, chimed in with the BMA. So you, you see that there's a there is some kind of consensus of concern that needs addressing. It wasn't just one view, even if it had been one view. The fact that it's the World Health Organization gives it credibility, so we would be likely to report it. Yes, yes, yeah. I, 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 it was just just a point, as I say, um, because the MHRA had already acknowledged that the level of toxins, the, uh, uh, the nitrosamines, tobacco-specific nitro nitrosamines were at the same level as in NRT and they considered that to be safe, as do ash. Um, but yes, I mean, we take that point. Um, John, listening to all of this? Um, nothing really to add, to be honest. Um, you know, it was a useful program for us. It had some undoubted negatives uh, there was as I said before an attempt to to balance to show some balance throughout but yeah. I felt it, it was a passing attempt frankly okay um, you know it was what it was yes Lorian I'm gonna have to differ with John I actually think we were quite fortunate this evening and that it could have gone very very differently I mean you're looking as we said earlier 22 and a half odd minutes of actual TV time to get in nigh on seven years worth of information um, which is a lot. And it's not patronising to say that the, the kind of people who would be viewing that programme can't understand science. It's, it's the reality. They're probably not interested at the in, end of the day. Indeed. If they were interested in that stuff, they'd have been watching something different. Yes. OK. Um, just, just to fill you in, Chris, uh, two slightly different views there. Um, Laurie and 
acutely aware that in, in 22 and a half minutes, which is about all of the airtime there is when you take the adverts and everything out, very difficult to shoehorn everything in. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it again, if there's any way you can get an hour long show or a two hour long show, or a, actually we'll do all day if you like, I'll grab as many people as I can and help you do that. And, and I think everybody in chat um, and everybody that watches this on video on demand, uh, once we identify the right newsrooms to talk to, I think they'll be getting tweeted a lot. Um, very much so. Sav? I've got one question that's just coming from chat and says, what does Chris think about the safety of the medicinal route considering the record of Chantix and the like? Oh, that's a good one. Chris, yes. Um, the question is, what do you think about the safety of the medicinal route given the safety record of Chantix, Champix, the Lidamide and that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's actually a big thing in my life because... Um, you know, people say that you should trust what doctors say. Um, my mum actually had morning sickness before I was born, and she went to the doctor and very fortunately turned down the drug that they offered her, which was thalidomide. So I, even though I wasn't a victim, I felt I, you know, I was already, before I was even born, pre-programmed to be suspicious of uh, medicinal safeguards. I think there are all kinds of pros and cons about the medicinal route, aren't there? And, and, and one of the uh, attractive points for a lot of people would be the robust research that would be necessary. Lots of negatives to do with perhaps excluding some of the innovation from the market. Seems that the EU have come up with a compromise whereby manufacturers will be able to choose whether to go down the main consumer regulation, pretty much as now, but with some extra warnings and reinforcements, or perhaps get a marketing advantage by going down that medicinal route. So I think the idea of, of that twin track approach seems to me, and I haven't really investigated this aspect very carefully, but it seems to have some pluses to it for the consumer then being given an even wider choice. But again, for the consumer to be able to make that choice in the shops, somebody needs to have this conversation in a place where they are hearing what is going on because it could be very, very confusing in two or three years' time when you have various products that have come to market through completely different regulatory routes. It might be quite difficult to explain to busy shoppers what that all means. Again, it's another important point why we've got to see this as the start of a conversation, not just we do the documentary and we move on to another subject. This is something that rolls on. Indeed, indeed, yes. I, I, what, I, what I'm hearing is that you absolutely want to take this further, that you want to widen the debate. Um, I think it's, well, one of the questions I wrote down earlier on when we were talking about doing a pre-record of the interview before I'd seen the footage was, how much of a backlash do you expect to get off Twitter because of the show tonight? Well, probably considerable, but you, you, you can't you can't be constrained by that and I think it's always healthy if you're being attacked by both sides <laughs> which I usually am and certainly when it comes to this subject I am um, I think that's absolutely fine I mean we have the privilege of having a mass audience of millions with that privilege also comes an obligation to be transparent to be open about the editorial decisions we've made and we're not robots we we make mistakes these are human decisions that are made in building something like doc that documentary and, and it's never going to be perfect and, and, and therefore to be answerable on Twitter and to be answerable on this program is important to me and I, I think it's all part of the ongoing conversation even it, though some of them are quite insulting and I won't read them out <laughs> okay that's yes I, I would I think sometimes you have to ignore the insults and just go with the uh, the food of the matter I've got to say I think um, in my personal experience, having done radio shows and what have you before this, I think you, you're, you're either a brave man or you are a very ethical man in that you have come on this show uh, to take what could have been massive criticisms from all over the place. Um, and I want to thank you for that on a personal basis. And I'm sure chat would echo that, um, that, you know, they, they, they say that it, it, this is it's not the act of a coward um, and I'm just I, I'm, I'm looking at self to see how the eyeballs are going so I can take anything else because I am aware that you're on a schedule tonight 
Um, and I, I want to kind of let you go by half past if I can, if that's all right. Yeah, I mean, chat, I'm very, very grateful that Chris has come in to actually discuss this with us. Um, the other, the one main thing that is coming up in chat, though, is why fo why it was focused on the, the Generation 1, the Sigalikes. Okay. That's the, the other main thing that's coming up. I'll try and pass that through. Um, I think it was. They, they, no, I don't think it was. Well, I didn't think it was either, I've got to be honest. Um, but I'll, I'll put it to Chris. Um, the chat has, or some of chat have picked up, they thought that it might have been overly focused on Generation 1, Sigal Lakes. Now, it's not a view that I share, and neither do my two interlocutors here. They don't share that either. What, what's your take? How would you answer that? Well, I thought, I thought it was quite difficult for us because we were trying to work out just how much the general audience would know about e-cigs. And in the, even in the very opening footage, I don't know if you remember, but the very first face was pretty shocking because that was yours. Yes. The, dawn. <laughs> the very first one of the whole documentary. Oh, well, that was the... The ratings, the ratings dive. In the first second, I'll, I'll know the blame. But anyway, <laughs> that, I think we saw Ron's generation two device pretty early on. Yes. We also, we also addressed the whole issue with the recording we made in your studio, and you explained what they were. I think that was enough. I think we, we can't be over-ambitious about the first documentary on British network television about the ESIG. It's, 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 it's got to be in digestible chunks. And just to carry the audience this far, I think has been some contribution it's not the end of the journey it's the first step in an ongoing interlocking exchange of ideas and debate that, that hopefully will result in the very best coming from this technology and getting the regulations and the advice up to speed yes i i, I can't say i disagree with you i think um it's a very very difficult area for somebody that's not as Lorian was saying earlier on, I've got five years in, Sav's got five years in. John, you're two years in now? No, just a year. And Lorian, how long for you? Just over one obsessive year. Right, so, I mean, between us, we've got a lot of research in this, and there'll be a lot of people sat in chat that are extremely well researched in this. My own feeling, if, if I dare to share it, and I do, is that I actually did think that it was slightly slanted towards ASIGs, not against them. That is my feeling. Um, I know one of our other presenters, Gary Dibley, said that his wife had been watching the show and when it got to the end of it, she felt a lot easier about what he was using because she doesn't understand the technology. And what came across to her was that actually these things are safe. There are just some very, very hyper cautious individuals out there in positions of, I was going to say authority, but credibility, shall we say. The fact that Robert West, on behalf of Cancer Research UK, ended up by saying, look, these are a good thing and everybody ought to be using them, to paraphrase him, but that's basically what he says, I think is a very good thing. And, and as a, a, a journalist, ex journalist myself, I always, always, always ended a piece that gave the tone of it. Um, and the fact that Robert was on at the end and said what he did, I'm going to say thank you for. Because people, and you and I both know how this is, they remember the beginning, they remember the end, there's adverts in the middle, and that's pretty much what they know. And I, I for one, certainly think it, it came across slightly slanted towards us. Mr. Dibley's wife thinks that, my own wife thinks that. Sav? There's a lot of mixed feeling in chat. There's some people that are very, very unhappy with it, and there are some people that are agree that it came across as slightly slanted towards us. But I think, in general, what I'm getting from chat is most people were quite pleased. The oil thing is very, very concerning. Yes. And the the fact that that poor poor man that died. We don't know that was related to ASIC, and it came across a bit like it was, and I think chat are quite concerned about that. But in general, um, chat are quite positive about it. Right. I'll, I'll need to relay that to Chris. The, the biggest criticism seems to be the lipoid pneumonia, Chris. Um, most people didn't really see a need to bring that up. Um, and given that I'd covered it 
in, in great depth and given that there was absolutely no proof either way. And I do know that the, uh, the doctor, the consultant that you spoke to about that case is a rabid, and I mean rabid, anti-ASIG bloke and has been for years. I've come, up, come across him a few times um, and he just just doesn't like them for no great apparent reason. That's basically where they are on that. Um, I, think, I think with that, and we've, we've addressed it already, but I think a couple of things. First of all, knowing the audience on the Tonight programme, my professional job to know the audience, and I've done many, many documentaries for many years in that slot, I, I've got to know what they need, and they need not theory, they need real people with real stories. Now, Glynis, the widow, just wanted more information. Even she admitted when I asked the pretty tough questions, you admit, I said to her, look, there is no proof, this is just the theory. Afterwards, in the voiceover, we said, we couldn't find anybody else with this kind of theory. There's no other consultant. It was an open verdict. Yes. So we distanced ourselves and, and gave it a context. But what it did was put a very human face, a very tragic face, actually, but, but certainly a very human face on what could have been just a very theoretical quest for more research. And, and also, there's also, I think, an instinct in program making to try and give a voice to people who are not being heard but have something of potential public interest to say and so often you will find in our documentary strand people with, that have got quite gentle voices they're not campaigners they don't have a, an organization around them and sometimes we put them in a documentary and you know it, has, it, it can have mixed effects indeed they're not supported in the way that organizations or communities like the vaping community are it's just an individual uh, but, but a very important story to tell within that context indeed indeed um have you can you stay with us or do you need to go i know you said you had a meeting to go to about the but next doc which i'm already late for um, sorry I mean, I th honestly if i think if there if there are more issues to discuss i mean i'd be delighted to stay no doubt you've got more interesting things to do than look at my ugly face there are people giggling behind me. <laughs> it's just a shame you can't hear it. And no, I'm not going to rise to the bait and say you're a handsome chap. <laughs> not after what you said about me at the top of the show. Service, is there anything else um, coming from chat or are we going back over the same ground? We're pretty much going back over the same ground. They, they obviously they want clarification on toxins and things and it's a lot of stuff that Chris himself can't actually answer. Uh huh. Okay, that's good. I think, Chris, if you need to get to that meeting, we'll let you go. I want to say thank you very, very much for coming along uh, to talk with us. I, I, you've got no idea how much I think everybody appreciates it because even, even if it was completely slanted against e-cigs, completely slanted for e-cigs, you know you're going to get criticism from, from both sides. You're bound to. And if you are getting criticism from... The, uh, the medical establishment, I'll call it that, and the anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots. If you're getting criticism from them, then, as well as vapors, then I think you've probably done your job very well, as you say. Um, I'm, I've got to say I'm pleased to have been part of this, but next time you're doing it, can you take me down to the office and I'll tell you when you're going wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, can, I, can I just uh, say my thanks to everybody who within the vaping community helped us along the way and thank you for your hospitality there uh, your, your patience with us because remember this is only the first step in a long journey for us and I hope we can continue on that journey and get more of these ideas to more viewers in the future and, and just very much see this as of the start I think that's that's yes if this is just the first step on a long journey the ability to march in the straight lane, I think, can be uh, fostered and engendered. Um, for, for joining us tonight, Chris Choi, I want to say a big thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll let you go. And I'd, I'd, 
anybody got anything to chime in? It's got to be so I can relate, unfortunately. But no, just as you say, I mean, I, you know, I've said I wasn't a fan of the show, but all credit to Chris for coming on the show tonight to uh, to talk about it. I'm very grateful for that. Indeed, so, uh, Lorian. Conversely, I am grateful for the show tonight. That's it's good to have mixed views, um, Sav. Chat are saying, please invite them back and thank him for giving us the time that others have not. And I am going to relay that. Uh, it, I've got to say thank you from chat for coming to join us. I've got to give you an open invite, which you have. You can come back anytime as you find out more or if you need to find, find out more. I think it's a big thank you for everybody. So for the moment, Chris Choi... Um, from the Tonight programme on ITV1. I suspect it's going to get tweeted a lot. I expect you might see even a rise in your ratings, which is not a bad thing for ITV. Sells more advertising. 10% of Vapor Trails, please. Um, so for the time being, Chris Choi, thank you very much for joining us. We'll take some adverts, and when we get back, we'll chat things through a little further. Uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in two minutes. in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVapor.co.uk and iVapor-elixir.co.uk iVapor and iVapor-elixir.co.uk Proud sponsors of VaporTrails.tv
And uh, we are back in the room. Um, technical difficulties notwithstanding, uh, that, that was, it was what it was. Sav, I know you've got stuff from chat. Yeah, I've got a couple of comments. I have to apologise to chat that I did not get through hardly any of their stuff, but it was just manic and I've got a cold and I'm sorry. But Lolly Loops has said, we really need a well-written press release with science attached. Press releases are what Big P and Big T use for their propaganda. It's free editorial and the media need educating with facts. And Joseph Case just said, this is a revolution whose time has come. There is nothing low-key about vaping. I was hoping for a programme to reflect that and not just sound bitey ho-hum. Could have been worse. Sensationalist fluff. There, I said it. Mm-hmm. Um... Absolutely right. I think one of the, the, the things that you've got to temper it with is it was ITV. Um, and it is, it has to be said, ITV is extremely tabloid. I think that's the word you used earlier on, isn't it, John? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you compare that to a programme like Panorama and it's chalk and cheese, even though Panorama's gone down in, down, downhill somewhat lately. Well, yes. I mean, it, it's, it's always going to be, uh, it's always going to be difficult. I mean, 22 and a half minutes to get it all together, it, 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 it's, uh, yeah. But I know, Sav, there were uh, a few people a lot less than happy with the show. Let's, let's, I, I want, I want all of the views on this because I'm going to keep on talking to Chris Choi because I do want to see ITV doing a lot more. Yeah, people, they really want people to dig in. There's a science, it's there, please use it, is what chat is saying. Talk to people like Clive Bates, Dr. Farsalinos, um, all of these eminent scientists that are doing great, great work out there at the minute. Get it out there, let people know. And I don't think we can say that hard enough. It's there, use it. Well, it's right. I do know from the, the point of view of a press release, having been the editor of a, uh, a magazine for an awful long time, if I got something in that was full of statistics and figures and equations and all the rest of it, that tended to get chucked out. It's, unfortunately, journalism today is soundbite journalism. Um, it's about the sound bites that are going to get the headlines. If anybody was watching the Twitter feed today and saw the teasers, the little trailers that went out in tweets, they were all very much, um, oh, I don't know, the kind of thing, you know, man grows extra nose on his head. What's that all about? It was that level of, of, uh, of stuff that was going out. But that's, I suppose, that's what appeals to an awful lot of people. I mean, I got inveigled into watching a television show not too long ago that I thought was going to be really, really rude, and it wasn't. But the headline kind of made you think that. Laurie, and I know you, you were quite happy about the whole thing, um, and I'm saying quite, as in not massively so, but, but what, what's your feeling on it before we go back to chat, because I'm, I'm interested in all of this. I, you know, I have reservations about the things that are in the programme, um, and a lot of it comes from the point of spending entirely too much time reading everything that's out there, so you kind of have to remove yourself from that. This programme was aimed at people who are disinterested. They're not us, they're not the antis, they are people who don't care. Now, the liquid pneumonia thing was a massive thing, and yeah, I'm gutted that it was included and they didn't have all of the information. However, you had that piece that maybe to gain sympathy from people, what you had afterwards is you did, shamefully, you had my little tiny second of going, you know, a smoker through two pregnancies. So I'm suddenly, I'm human, I'm relatable. You had the guy who I don't know, the guy who has got terminal cancer. Now this is a watershed moment in terms of TV. The second you go, this man you're looking at has terminal cancer. Instant sympathy from the, from the audience, as it were. You can't see it any other way. I've got terminal cancer and I'm enjoying this. This, this, is, this is doing me better than had I carried on smoking. You had normal people smoking, uh, using electronic cigarettes in, in a pub. These things resonate far more with the audience who don't really care than with um, people sitting there spouting science. And that's the target audience that we're looking at. It's not that they're ignorant or stupid. They don't care about the subject. So you have to get them in with people they can associate with. And it's smokers, people smokers can associate with. Sorry, that programme did that tonight. Generally speaking, it did. And it did it very, very well. And when we had the guy from the WHO going on about 
children um, and the appeal and advertising, most people would have switched off while he was talking because he was uninteresting and he was boring. He was what definitely did, that. Yeah, he was. But the powerful thing they did is rather than have a speech about why that was wrong, they had a text caption. Now that text caption on the screen is what sticks with people. They hear the blurdy, blurdy, blur. They kind of get an idea what boring matey is saying. What actually sticks in their mind is the three lines of text on the screen in front of their faces. It's like the sound bite. It's the equivalent of it. And there was a lot of that done throughout the program. So as much as, you know, there was more people against than there were for, the language that has been put out for the lay person who's not interested, who knows absolutely nothing, was definitely biased in our favour. John? <laughs> oh. I was dreading you asking me because I've got an audio loop back on here with like a 20 second delay. <laughs> oh, I don't know how that's happened. So that sounded like sort of four Lorians just, just chatting away there. <laughs> right, you haven't There's got. Like I am. Have you got a window open on the shore? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, well, I don't. I don't think I have. It's not open anywhere else. Okay, um, great. Well, I'll I'll leave you for the moment then and go to Sav. Sav. Yeah. Um, Sprightly says his complaint he's got about the show was there was not enough of VTTV aired. <laughs> yeah. Can't really can't really disagree <laughs> with that, can you, Sav? No, no. <laughs> Screwbag. Rob has said. They need to start here in Malta. It's the start of a whole road for this legal nightmare. And Russell Orders said. The show Chris put together was balanced in a general purpose sort of way. It wasn't even anti-smoking. The oil thing was uncomfortable, but it was made clear that it was an isolated and unsubstantiated claim by the doctor involved. In fact, none of the anti-stuff was substantiated, it was all conjecture. The overall impression was positive to an informed person. I'm not sure how it would have gone down with the general public. The daybreak stuff was poor in comparison. I would agree. Jan has said the negative press comes from organisations who can work the press. Gillis has said if they'd spent the time wasted on the North East Shop interview talking to people like Clive Bates, we would have got our point over. But that would not have been good TV. Chris has to try and balance it and make it attractive to his viewers. Steffi has said if it was aimed to people who don't care, it is worse. The only thing they will remember is, oh, this guy died because of E6. Outlaw Cox has said, I think in a way Chris was in the middle, not pro or against, but that's his job, non-biased reporting. And Dave Kay has said, I haven't seen the programme yet, so I'm looking at people's reactions to see what it was like. It's really interesting that there is no consensus on whether it was good or bad for us. And uh, Rob has also said, one major point that Chris has overlooked, his show would be illegal to run if the current TPD goes through. No mention on freedom of press and free speech. Yes, that's uh, that's something that we uh, that we need to, to to look at, and it's. I mean, if if he's right in what he says, and this is just a first step, and that it's it's going to get pushed further, and he's going to try and do more, and that that's exactly how it sounds. If that's going to be the case, I suspect we're going to have more input. I hope we're going to have more input, and. I, Again, judging by what he said tonight, he wants to keep in touch, he wants more information. Um, and if he can get the chance to get on and do more, it sounds like he's going to do it. John, have you got your sound issues sorted? Yeah, it's back now. Yeah. Good, good. What, what, was what were you asking me? <laughs> well, it was, if you hadn't heard what Lorian said, I, I, I basically just wanted your general take on it. Um, because yeah. you, I know you, you mentioned yourself earlier on, you, you're quite a hardened cynic. And I don't mean that in a nasty way, but I, 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 I'm sitting here trying to do the 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 middle the middle line, you know, um, because I can I can see both sides. I, I t to be honest, I would much rather the lipoid pneumonia thing hadn't been in there. I don't think it was necessary. I think it was sensationalist. That's my view on it. But what's your view on the whole show, John? I mean, I'd agree with with you on that. It was extremely sensationalist. Um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't particularly happy with it. I thought that, the, as I said before, that they kind of only made passing reference to the the positive facts, 
but uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sort of raging mad about it, which is quite a surprise because I thought I would be. <laughs> well, yes. And overall, um, certainly giving us Professor West at the very last, uh, as the last comment in the show, was fantastic for us. Yes, yes, I, 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 I think you're right there, and I've, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to give a few trade secrets away here, but obviously, John and I talk. And during the course of the day, I think both of us were getting more and more nervous. Yes, very much. Um, and, and I've had a few, a few tweets and a few uh, Skypes from other people saying, I'm that nervous, I'm faping like a bastard here. And, I, and I'm here to tell you, when I finish this, that'll be 30 mils today. And it's not the weak <laughs> stuff. Um, it, it's, I've been like a cat on a hot tin roof, especially after getting cancelled out of doing the daybreak show yesterday. Um, but back to chat, uh, and let's see what else you've got to say, Saf, because I can see you've got a lot. <laughs> oh, I can ignore most. Out. She doesn't tell you. You what? <laughs> I'm You're being told that. <laughs> yes, they're all talking about my hair. Sorry. <laughs> really? Yes. They're talking about your hair. They are. Yes. <laughs> But I do have a question that's coming. <laughs> and Philip Deer said, Dave, can you please clarify what Chris Choi was saying about this opening a wider debate? Well, the opening the wider debate, look, let's, let's, let's kind of... I know he won't mind me saying this. A television journalist's reputation is built on how many viewers he gets, especially on commercial telly. It has to be. There's, there's, there's just no way around that. He's not. None of them will go and look at something that's an open and shut case like that. They don't like that kind of thing. I never liked it. But if you can find a subject that raises the blood pressure and raises the temperature on both sides, then you've got something that program makers are going to want to take on. What they, they, what they don't want is five people around a table all going, yes, I agree, yes, I agree. What they want is a fight. They want not necessarily entrenched views, but they want passionate views. And I think, I'm safe in saying, that Chris Choi and the Tonight Programme and indeed the ITV News outfit has now found that fight. Because let's face it, we are passionate, aren't we, John? Oh, yes, very much so. Um, this is something that we're all very passionate about. Now, you can hear just just by the various different... I'm nearly happy with it, I'm quite happy with it, I'm not happy with it, I'm bloody furious at it, that we've got going in chat, which you've already intimated, Sav, that, yeah. that there is... There's all kinds of views, and, and I'm, I'm really pleased that John and Lorian see it from slightly different angles, or very different angles. I mean, it depends on, on how you view it. And I think, I do think, that he's going to do his level best to get more airtime for the ESIG debate. And, you know, I would love nothing better to be on a panel of seven people that had Stanton Glance on it and Martin McKay on it and me on it, and John on it, and Clive Bates on it, and Jerry Stimson on it. Equal numbers either side. With a chairman, somebody like Chris Choi, Paxman, any of those, and I know Paxman's not ITV, but somebody that's, that's good at doing the job. Something like Question Time, but for an hour and a half, where we could really get at it. Where we could really get the nitty gritty sorted out. In a, a public arena, like the mainstream telly, and I don't actually care what channel it's on, where those who would govern us are likely to tune in, where both sides of the argument can be put, because at the end of the day, there's going to have to be a consensus. At the moment, what we're being faced with in Europe, the majority of us do not like, and we would like to see it altered. A lot of us have got different opinions on how that needs to be done, but it definitely does. And if widening the debate out, if, let, let's assume it does all get rubber stamped in February. If the debate gets widened out and there's a big enough noise and there's a big enough public debate, then 
things might change. I'm not saying they will, but there's a chance. And as long as there's a chance, that chance is worth holding on to. So from that point of view, I'm, I'm quite pleased with tonight. He's right. It is the first of the dot rows. Let's hope there's many more. Sav, is there much more there? Yes, we've seen we moved on from the hair debate, but they did say that they'd like to pass on that your hair's looking rather lovely as well, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I just say I, I'm I'm going to say this, and it's absolutely true. I've uh, as I say, I've been like a cat on a hot tin roof all day to day. I was bloody fuming last night absolutely bloody fuming last night and i've been shaking like a jelly most of the day but as often is the case chat has cheered me up no end um thank you best chat on the planet that's all there is to say totally but um vaping sam has said remember we are the enthusiasts where the ants eat us I thought, oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. That's good, uh, Mark Shaw has said, one positive is you may get some people who only use the cigar likes, watch that show, and move on to better things. Uh, that's also possible. I, and and given, given the nature of some of the devices that were on show, I wonder how many people saw Ron with the VTR and went, oh, mm. didn't know you could get. What's that? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Max Height has said, we need passionate gobshites. Go DD. Thank you. Um, I think. Screwbag has said, you need that list of people in a debate with Linda McVan in the middle and force her to listen. Yes. And Stone Cold 1967 has said, I just have to say, I felt sorry for the guy who passed away, but I myself have damaged lungs. But when I had my breathing assessment, my lung capacity has increased by 10%. Well, this is this is the thing. This is why I say, and, and I know why, and John agrees with me, and I think Laurie and does too. I, th I think the majority of people would think that that bit just did not have been in. It, it didn't actually say anything. Had that little bit of, there you go, in the five, six, seven years that e-cigs have been available in the UK, one person, even if it was proven, which it hasn't been, but even if it had been proven, one person's died in that same length of time if we are to believe what we are told by those who would govern us, umpty million would have died. In fact, it would have been 500,000, half a million people. Though I'll take those odds any day of the week. And I think that's the bit that they really ought to have been able to do. But it is what it is. You play the cards you dealt. Sorry. Next one, Sav. Um, Michelle has just typed in, I thought it was a fairly good show until my mum rang up asking about toxins and really concerned about oils. Soon put her straight, but how many others don't have the voice of reason at the end of the phone? And one thing that we haven't covered yet was the Chinese vendor. And Entropy said that Chinese vendor probably would have slagged off every other vendor manufacturer except himself. There was no context. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that, that is absolutely the case. Um, and I've got to be really, really careful how I put this. It's the way certain people are that they will big themselves up by belittling others. And those of you that get spammed from Chinese wholesale vendors trying to sell you e-cigs. Have you had any of that, John and Laurie? I've had, yeah, I've had plenty of them. Yeah. It kills our accounts. Yes, well, you, you know exactly what I'm on about. I mean, you know exactly what they, what, what they like when they come in the, in the emails. You're getting, ours is very best, everybody else is crap, and so on and so forth. I mean, I wasn't surprised by that at all, were you? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, you know, the, the, you ask any businessman, he's going he's gonna to turn it to his advantage if he can. Um, so, yeah, it was par for the course. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the hard part, of course, is being able to explain that. And I would imagine that if anybody on ITV had stood up and said, that's just what they do, they're never going to get away with it. Anything else, Sav? Yeah, a couple more things. Um, Rob has said, I'll happily add my medical files to research. 20% increase in lung function after only four months of vaping and another 15% the following year. And Happy Vaping has said, all it took was a couple of deaths of popcorn lung day for the diacetyl issue. We need to be careful and vigilant at all times with regards to this. Absolutely right. Um, and you'll, you'll get absolutely no argument from me 
about that. We do have to be on our toes. I think, actually, if this week has taught us anything, it's taught us that we need to be ready to battle every fight that comes our way. Can I just jump in one second? Um, just something came up in chat. A man called Keith, and he's come in. He said, I joined after watching the programme on ITV tonight. It opened my eyes to vaping. Been on A6 for only two weeks. Well, Keith, you are welcome along anytime. Sunday to Thursday at 9 o'clock, followed by RY4 Radio. There you go. Um, we cover all kinds of stuff. But yes, just, just to, to, to finish what I was saying, this is a first step. Um, we have many, many, many more battles ahead of us. If this week's taught us nothing else, it's taught us that we have got many more battles ahead of us. And some of them, we are, we're going to be the underdogs in. We're not going to know how to fight. Um, for on, uh, an awful lot of us, this is all brand new. And I know a lot of the team have said they had no real interest in politics before all of this started. Um, and now they find themselves having to have an interest in politics because at the end of the day, it's our lives that are at stake. Never forget, you are the most important person in this whole thing. You are the most important stakeholder. It's not me, it's not Chris Choi, it's not Linda McAvan, it's not anybody like that. It's you, the user. My feeling on the whole thing is e-cigs as we are told by those who really do know are almost a hundred percent safer almost zero risk in comparison to smoked tobacco that's the big thing that's what we've got the major on that's what we've got to fight for and as ever we're going to bring the show to a close now i want to say thank you to laurian and john for coming in i thought it I thought it fit that the two folks that were on the show that Chris Choi was on joined me for that. I'm ever so pleased to say that there's been that slight difference of opinion. I think that's good for us and for vaping. Um, and I, I just also want to say a massive big thank you for the personal support that both of you have given me on what's been a difficult few weeks um, and, and the work that you've both done. I really, really do appreciate it. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. You both know I mean it. As I've, as I've said before, Dave, you're welcome to my support. You can wear it any time you like. Yeah, but can you pull the hairs out first? <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you to you two. And Sav, your job tonight cannot have been easy. I assume the team's been helping you. The team have been absolutely brilliant and chat have been absolute superstars but i just want to say we've got a message from phil lacy who says i tell you what that program's done for me it made me realize there was a web program chat show like this wow just wow wow um have you got a last word have you picked something heartening from chat over the, the, the <laughs> length of that there has been a consensus from chat that the last word has to go to my hair <laughs> So, yeah, my hair gets the last word. Uh, I need to see Sav's hair now, I really do. You'll have to watch it on Catch Up, Lorian. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, you won't be able to see it over there. Could you not? No. Never mind. Um, okay, that's, that's completely thrown me now. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to run my fingers through that hair the next time we are together. In a friendly <laughs> way, not in a Lib Dem way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, controversial. <laughs> That's probably a good point to say good night, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. You, chat and viewers, make my night every night we're doing this. Um, without you, there'd be no point in us being here. What we do, we do for you. I love that you come along to watch. Thank you so much. Um, and from all of us here, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, vape on, vape hard, and don't let the bastards grind you down. See you next time.